How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lai Hobby Time. I just wanted to start by saying thank you all so much for the amazing Kickstarter launch that we had. We reached the funding goal in 20 minutes and tripled it in the first 24 hours. I had honestly no idea what to expect going into it, but you guys blew my mind. So very sincere thank you for that. Last week I made my first piece of playable terrain for the Wild Imaginary West RPG. This week I'm making my first playable vehicle. The humans are all on 28mm bases, so it needs to be compatible with that. One of the very first builds that I ever made in the Wild Imaginary West was this mechanized wagon right here. In universe, this thing is known as a mule. As you can see here, it is obviously not the correct scale to be playable, but it is the quintessential mech for the Wild Imaginary West, so today I'm going to make a big one. For the base, I used a piece of scrap acrylic, and I marked out the dimensions of a wagon in the scale of my miniatures, and then I found an oval that was almost the right size from the base of a dragon from the Lord of the Rings tabletop war game. I needed it just a little bigger than this dragon was, so I traced around the rim with this compass. The line was a little messy, but I did have an oval in the correct size, so I took that and cut it off camera on my bandsaw. To smooth out the edge, which was not completely smooth, and give it a bevel, I broke out my orbital sander and I went to town. With the base cut out and prepped with the sander, it was time to begin making the wagon. And the first thing to do was to construct a box. And to build that box, I broke out my balsa wood. Rune Foundry and I are playing around with different ideas for how to release physical mechs for play in the game, but the tried and true way of doing anything in the Wild Imaginary West mechs included is kit bashing, and that will always be an option for improving your gaming experience. One of the main reasons I'm so excited about playing this game myself is for all of the cool stuff that I'm going to be able to build to play it. The West itself is supposed to feel kit bashed and assembled from scratch to meet the needs of the people that live there, so players and wardens of the game will be encouraged to do the same thing. Once I was done with the body of the prairie schooner, I broke out an old clothes hanger to form the bows that hold up the bonnet. I tested the width and angle of the wires where they would sit in the wagon and then I cut out three bows of roughly the same size which I glued into place. This awesome material, which I only got regular access to last year, is a baby wipe. After it's dried, it's the perfect material for a canvas cover like this. I glued the fabric on one side and put a bead of glue over top of the bows and then I tugged the canvas tight and glued it on the other side. Once that was firmly set, I trimmed off the excess and then I covered the bonnet with Mod Podge. This will keep it nice and stable and firm when it's dry. With the wooden box now looking recognizable as a covered wagon, it was time to bring in the imaginary portion. I started by building up some volume beneath the wagon to attach the legs. This thing is going to be played with and moved around on a table, so I needed to make sure that the construction was more robust than my typical builds. While snipping more pieces of the hanger, I thought I'd get some practice in with my sharpshooting skills. First I took out the bottle, and then I turned my attention to the cap. For the legs of this mech, I used some thick square rods of styrene, which I marked and then cut off camera into these tongue and groove joints with a hole in the middle so that I could articulate the legs until I found the position that I wanted them to stay in. After all four legs were on, I prepped the base by adding a molded resin rock. I mostly went with this material because it is very heavy and will add weight to the bottom of this which could get top heavy if I wasn't careful. And they're probably pretty top heavy in universe as well, but when you have giant monsters to worry about, who needs to worry about physics? I finished texturing the base off camera because I was on a phone call and I forgot to hit record, uh, but you didn't miss much. After that I began adding cargo and greeblies and armor plates similar to what I made on my first mule. In the game, mules will be useful for many different things, but primarily they will kind of act as a mobile campsite. Uh, they'll have a lot of room for storing tools and items and treasures and anything like that, but the main thing that makes them appealing is the forestall that they can carry. They can carry large forestalls that will keep you safer from larger animals than a forestall that you would have on your horse or on your back. Forestalls, the technology behind them, the way that they work, the complicated and intriguing lore and controversy around their creation, and all of that is laid out in detail in the rulebook, and it's a really fun part of the way that this game plays. Kit bashing in this scale was a little different than kit bashing in 1 to 70 second scale. It's obviously the same thing mechanically, but it felt different for some reason, almost like a different dialect or accent of kit bashing. I don't know if that makes sense. 
uh, and it actually kind of slowed me down a little bit. I had a hard time making decisions about what should go where. No two mechs in the Wild Imaginary West are exactly alike. Uh, in universe, there are mechanics who are in the business of upgrading different kinds of wagons and carts to give them legs, uh, but they aren't cheap. The small two-legged carts are called pipers. The medium-sized ones, like this one, are mules, and the big ones, which are often the size of a small building, are called dromedaries. The last thing to do was to add the reins. I know there are no horses here, but mechs go forward and backward with pedals, like a car, but the steering all happens via reins, like a horse. That's just what the people are used to. With that, the construction was done, and it was time to clean up my hobby mat and get to painting. And I organized all of my usable bits and saved those and swept away the rest. Then I flipped over my hobby mat to the dirty side to begin the painting. Along with the mech, I'm also going to be painting up the second character mini from my game. I just got this file from Kawe and printed it as I was making the mech. I've honestly been so happy with the artists that I'm working with on this project. Just look at the beautiful artwork turned into the 3D model. I loaded up my airbrush with some matte black primer, and while I paint these minis, I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. After both of the minis had been primed black, I used the airbrush to throw on the base colors. And just because I'm going to be building more things to play with in the game now at a larger scale than I used to, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop making dioramas for the Wild Imaginary West in the small scale. I have a few big projects that I'm planning and I'm really excited about. One of those is a permanent layout uh, and display for the 1 to 70 second scale Gunnison, which is the town that I've been building. Um, I will fill in all the roads, I will add town folk, and the rest of the final details. And the other project that I'm really excited to tackle is another big train layout, uh, much bigger than the first two. I will do both of those things though when I have just a little bit more space. And speaking of that little more space, my wife and I just bought our first house, which we are very excited about. It's pretty small, but there is room on the property to build a detached garage for my new studio. So if anybody out there watching this video would like to sponsor a new studio build, shoot me an email. After some pigment powders were put on the base, the mule was done, and it was time to switch over to my hunter. The artist I've been working with to do the official art for the Wild Imaginary West, including all of the characters, is named Hardy Fowler. His artwork is incredible, and last week he posted a video uh, painting this hunter. I'm always so impressed with his videos and his art style, so if you'd like to see the painting process and his thoughts as he paints it, you should definitely go check it out. It's in the description, and it's totally worth watching. Because we hit all of our initial stretch goals with the campaign, that allows us to turn all six of the trades that we had Hardy do artwork for into miniatures that will come with the game. And I'm so excited. I can't decide which one's my favorite. The second to last thing to do on this paint job was to splash a little red paint on the ground in front of this hunter for him to inspect, as the pose would imply. The last thing to do was to paint the rim of the base with black 1.0. After that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. The Kickstarter has three more weeks to go and it'll only get better with every stretch goal that we pass. So keep sharing it and telling your friends and local game stores about it if you think they might be interested. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week everyone. I'll see you next time.